Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, live from New York City in Harlem, it's me, Alex Bennett, and this is, in fact, the Ramble, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, let's talk to Bubs. I don't know how many this is, Larry Bubbles Brown, but last time, what did I say? It was like 100 and, uh, 240 or something like that. 240, yeah. Of, of these things that we have done over the years. When did we first start doing this? I think uh, 2016. Really? This guy's a great memory for days. 2016. So we've been doing this for eight years. Yeah. And eight times 52? 400. <laughs> 400. Well, we're, but we weren't up to that, was it? What did I say? You said about 240. 240. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to look it up again. You know. Yeah, five. That seems we couldn't have done 400, could we? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Let me see here. Where is uh, bu- 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 bum? Oh, uh, vault uh, guests. 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 Come on. There we go. Bubs. Okay, there's Bubs. First one, by the way, that I have here. I've, I've saved all of them. Hold on a second. Is, um, yeah, 11, 12, 16. Okay, so 2016. And you, know then, what, you know what happened then? What, what? We, uh. We actually taped it a week before, and we were making jokes about the election, about, oh, boy, uh, it's good. <laughs> we, we were talking about Trump and the Clinton. Well, uh, I don't know how many. Let me see here. Uh, uh, get info. Here we go. Um, we are up to 200... Oh, hold on, i got to eat my glasses. They're really small. 241 episodes of this. Over eight years. That's... Over eight years. And uh, if you really want to, uh, if you really want to have a, a, a feeling of uh, going back to the past, this isn't the first one, I don't think. This is the second one, I think. But wait a minute. Larry Bubbles Brown... He's one of my favorite people because, well, he's as sick as I am. <laughs> no, what I mean by that is we're both kind of hypochondriacs. Would you call yourself a hypochondriac? Yeah, much worse than when I was a kid, but still uh, still worried. Really? Yeah. yeah because we were just sitting here. Cause I, I think I have a, a hernia. So he okay, has a hernia. So nothing much has changed is what we're saying. Uh, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could hear it. Okay. So we're up to 241. So when are we going to hit? Uh, well, this is this is we've done 242 and 243 in eight years. So it's two. So we're averaging 30 a year. So we must. Well, we take some time off occasionally. Wait a minute. Let me see here. But uh, so we, we if we did one a week, that'd be 50. Years. Okay, so but we've got seven more episodes after this one to hit 250. And we should hit that, what, in a, a, a couple, of, about a month and a half or so, something like that, you know. So thanks, Larry. I think that's it. I think we got to quit at this point. Um, <laughs> we can quit at 250. Yeah, why wouldn't it have been if it were that many years and we did two every, well, we did one a week. We did 52 well, you take, a year. You take some time off around the holidays and don't we don't do them and then there's, yeah, but still, I, wouldn't you think it would be higher? Seems like it would be a little higher. Yeah, see, I would think around three. I would guess forty a year. That'd be three twenty. 
Um, well, it's a good question. I don't know. Maybe I didn't do. Did I do them every 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 two weeks with you at that point? Or yeah, was it we do two huh? two a week. Wow. Well, anyway, that was the second one. I can't find the first one, so there may be one that is. Uh, yeah, it's like the lost episode. <laughs> the lost episode. Yeah. So if anybody has it, please uh, get it to us so we can we can play it here on the program. So uh, we've, we've done more. We've done more episodes than Seinfeld. <laughs> so is comedy alive or dead? I think it's. Well, there's never been more people doing it, but it doesn't seem very funny, does it? Well, I mean, um, I've seen a couple of new comics. There's a female. I'm trying to remember her name now. Can't remember her name right now. Who I thought was very funny. She's filthy. She's absolutely filthy, but she's funny. Nikki uh, Glazer. Nikki Glazer. Absolutely, you got her. Do you like her? Uh, she is filthy. She did. Uh, she got a bunch of heat from the the last uh, roast. She. I guess killed on that. I didn't see it. Yeah, she, that's where I first saw her, and then I went to look for her stuff. You know, she was. Yeah, she's been around a while. Is she, is she didn't she start as a uh, a podcaster or something? Uh, that I don't know. Because mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, but anyway, I like her. I think she's okay. I think she's good. Uh, have I seen any male comics that are funny? Nah. Uh, how about you? Yeah, I haven't seen. There's so there's literally hundreds of people in every city trying to do stand up comedy. So. Yeah, but some of the ones you work with, you work you work with uh, Esparza. Felipe, yes, who yeah. just did a. I think he's in Australia now. He travels so much, but uh, but he likes to use you as an opening act whenever he's in the area, right? He uses me well. No, he'll fly me places, but uh, he he works everywhere. Yeah, so he's, he's doing Europe. He's doing Spain. I think next month. I tried to watch him, but I I didn't find him that. He didn't get to me, you know. Okay, well, he's not for everyone. Then again, the, I, what I did is I watched him doing it in Spanish, so maybe that's the problem. <laughs> well, he is the only one on Netflix that has a uh, special in Spanish and English. And English, yeah. And and when he goes out on the road, sometimes he does his act in Spanish, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, very rarely, but he does, yeah. Very rarely. Oh, okay. Uh, but he does very well. He's a very hot comic. Is that yeah. because he's hot in the in the um, Hispanic community, or is he just hot because he's hot? Uh, mostly Hispanic, I'd say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I better learn to speak Spanish. Yeah. And then you work with uh, Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey, uh, Rob Schneider. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, I get uh, I, when David Tell comes out here. I usually work with him. So I actually he doesn't like travel. Him. He doesn't travel yeah. much out here. I like Rob Schneider. Uh, I uh, no, uh, I always liked him. I forget uh, anything else, but that I just liked him as a guy, as a person. A great guy, yeah. You know, he's and very hot and, politically now. So, well, he uh, I think he's backed off of that a little bit because I think he kind of hurt his business. You know, um, because in comedy, you don't want to alienate people. You're trying to make them laugh, you know. Right. Um, but he has a lot of political ideas, which are out there, you know. And I've told him that. I told him he's full of crap, but, you know. Uh, but but the point is that he was a comic that people made fun of. And I would be watching Family Guy, and there'd be some kind of joke and blah, 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 like Rob Schneider. Mm-hmm. And I would get very mad at it because I, I suddenly felt very protective towards Rob. I mean, why are they blasting him? What's wrong with Rob Schneider? Can you, can you think of what's wrong with Rob Schneider outside of his politics? Forget that. What's wrong with Rob Schneider? Funny guy. I would say nothing. He's one of the nicest guys I have ever met. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, what's wrong with Rob Schneider, period, in his comedy or anything else? He's been a very funny guy over the years. 
you know? Well, he's done, uh, he's been in 80 movies. So. Yeah, and I think half of them were Adam Sandler films. Sandler put him in almost <laughs> every one of his films. Right. You know, doing something, even if it was one line. So, you know, I mean, I, but I just never understood why, you know, at, at Family Guy, they felt he could be the butt of a joke, that he was worthy of being a butt of a joke. And so I got very protected. In fact, last time I interviewed Rob, which was a couple of years ago, I told him that. I said, i become very protective of you, you, you know, because you don't deserve it. You know, you've always treated other comics well, you know. So you don't deserve it. So anyway, that was me. Yeah, last time I saw him, he actually mentioned you, and uh, he liked you a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, is he still married to the same woman? He is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the uh, she's um, is she Mexican? I think. She is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, she starred in that TV show with him that he did on the Real Netflix, Rob. Yeah. Which, by the way, is a very good show. Uh, it's uh, it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, I watched it. I I watched it with great te- trepidation because I was going to do an interview with him, and I I hate to watch things that somebody's doing, and then interview him, and then the inevitable question is, so did you watch it? And you go, yeah. What'd you think? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I'm never one to pull punches on that, and so I don't watch stuff ahead of time in case I'm asked that question. But I did in that case. And I liked it a lot. I told him, I said, you know, usually I don't like to watch things ahead of time because I like you. I want to like it, but I don't know if it's going to be any good. And it turned out it was terrific. It was a very good little series. In the last episode, this is something that people give you a reason people to go out and watch it. He decided he needed some really great, dramatic, beautiful music at the end of the show. It was the last episode. So where did he go? He went to Ennio Morricone. You know who Ennio Morricone is? Uh, Rob told me a story. He did the uh, score for uh, The Good, Uh, the Bad, the Ugly. uh, No, uh, almost every Sergio Leone film. Yeah. He did Once Upon a Time in America, which is a score that when I hear it now, I cry. It's that good. I mean, he was maybe the best guy that ever did music for movies. And um, he went and hired Ennio Marconi to do about seven minutes of music at the end of his last episode. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was one of the last things that Marconi ever did before he died. He said it, was, he said it wasn't difficult. The Marconi will write for anybody who wants him to write something for them. You know. Really? Yeah, yeah. So he he managed to get Morricone to uh, uh, to uh, do all the music at the end of that episode. It's amazing. So it was a good show, and um, I, I uh, you know I, I I like Rob, and I'm very protective of him. So I'm very protective of any comic that you know somebody like Family Guy makes fun of, and I will happen to like them, you know. Um, maybe you think they're mediocre comics, but I think they're nice people. And, and my, by the way, my, you know, my whether I like your work or not like your work is many times uh, predicated on the fact that I like you. You mm-hmm. know, and there were comedians that I I liked a lot that I would give a real shot just simply because I liked them as people. Like you, you're not funny. Yeah, you don't want. You <laughs> you're don't not, like to see your friends bomb. You're not funny. I considered uh, putting you on my shows and on my radio show as a as a sympathy thing because I like you, Larry. <laughs> Though you happen to be somebody that I think should have had a bigger career, but you didn't. Well, you didn't go after it. You didn't chase it. You didn't feel thirsty. I didn't have a lot of drive, so... Yeah, no, you never felt the thirst. You no. just, hey, I'll get up and do my act. Hi, how are you? I'm Larry Bubbles Brown. I, uh, well, you know, I'd you, like to be a star. Who do, you know, who do you know that's got a lot of drive? Well, you know what you would think? What you would think is somebody is so good that 
the business would find them and they would become a big star. And if that were the case, then Bobby Slayton would probably be the biggest star in show business. All right. I mean, can you think of a better comic? The best, uh, Chris Rock calls him the best club comic in the country. Yeah. Not anymore. He doesn't do it, but, you know. That's true, yes. Well, he quit. And I said to him, he said to me, well, I'm quitting. And I went, you're quitting? I said, that's like, you know, that's like asking Yasha Heifetz not to play the violin anymore. Right. You know, I mean, you're a virtuoso what you do and you're quitting. I can't put up with it anymore. It's, it, the business has passed me by. And then he explained why, and I kind of had to agree with him. You know, he just went, I, you know, I go to a club and I can't, I can't do the material I used to do. It, because people would start booing me or start je- jeering me because I'm doing something about a woman, you know? Yeah, the younger audiences, their heads would pop off. When people they today do not understand that comedians are allowed to say anything they want to, and you're allowed to laugh at it. But um end of story, yeah. you know? So I'm, I'm kind of amazed at all of it, you know? Um, I I think it's a sad thing that certain comics can't work today. Then there are comics we knew that, you know, did okay while they were going, and they just kind of just disappeared. I mean, you know, what happened to Gonzo? Dr. Gonzo. Yeah, he was huge when I started here. He was one of the big San Francisco comics. He was like the second comic I think I ever had on my show. You know, nice guy. Yeah, well, there's a, he did a lot of song parodies, which uh, it's hard to do TV when you do song parodies because you've got to pay for the rights of that song. So, Yeah, but the, the other thing was that he, um, he, he, he did okay primarily because he played and sang, the, he was sang and played the guitar as part of his comedy right. act. And when you do that, nobody wants to follow you. So you're automatically... Uh, of you know, top top act, you know, number one act. The on hardest the thing there is to follow. Yeah. Oh, it's the hardest thing to follow. That or a comedian who screams, right? Yeah. No, really. If you scream Guinness, loud enough, Guinness you're, and her Goldthwait. you're Bob Goldthwaite, and you're uh, you, nobody wants to follow you. So you know, you're the top billed guy on a on a show, and. Uh, uh, nobody, nobody. It, did you ever want to follow Bob Goldthwait? Oh hell no! You know, I mean, you you be the perfect lead in to him because he comes in and spoils a room, but you never do. So you kind of pass off the room to the comic in a fairly you you pretty well made them ripe for the comic that's coming on. I think. Yeah, if I do well, I it's always. I'm easy to follow. Yeah, yeah. And not easy to follow because he's not funny. He's easy to follow because the tone of his act doesn't what we call spoil the room. You know. Yeah, you, you some have, of those guys you, would get the room on fire and it just would be impossible to follow. Well, nobody ever wanted to follow Bob Goldthwaite, so obviously he became the top liner on every show, show he was in. They just, no, I'm not going to follow him. Okay, well, we'll put him on uh, at last. You know, yeah, uh, he's one of those guys that probably never, uh, he never was an opening act when he came, <laughs> like him and Bob Rubin jumped immediately to open mic to headliner. Yeah, exactly. Because you just can't follow them. All right. Um, and, uh, but I'm not a comedian, so I couldn't follow anybody. Okay. So. I, I, I wonder if there I wonder if there are bands that have would have trouble following certain opening bands. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I would think probably that's true, you know. But uh, I mean, like for instance, I don't think anybody would want to follow ACDC. <laughs> no, you know, which is a very loud band. You know, uh, that's a good question. I'm gonna have to ask a musician that sometime. What's what's the yeah, kind of find mu- that out. What's the kind of musical act you don't want to follow? You know, um, there was there was years ago uh, 
it was down the peninsula of some big room that David Bowie was playing, and they said he had trouble following his opening act, but I forget who it was. Well, you know, because... And people because, were actually walking out. Well, because David Bowie is a very laid-back, quieter act. It's not a, not a noisy act. And so if maybe if he, that was the problem. If, yeah. yeah, if you have somebody going on before you, ACDC, you're not going to be able to follow it, no matter how good you are. No matter if you're David Bowie, uh, you know, you could be John Lennon. You couldn't follow a real noisy act, you know. Uh, but I'm surprised that David Bowie didn't get to pick his opening act. You would think, you know, and say, "I'm sorry, I can't follow that kind of act. They're very good." But I can't follow it. So find me somebody I can follow. Now, oh, let's see here. What act can't, uh, can't Donald Trump follow? <laughs> Actually, Donald Trump is always the opening act, is always the top-lined act, because you can't follow him. And not because he's good. You know, uh, you've probably seen a lot of opening acts, or a lot of, I say opening acts, top acts. Headliners that were terrible, right? Yeah. They were no good. But somehow they were headliners. And you went, how did they get there? That's how I feel about Trump. You know, there's no talent there. There's no ability. There's no political whatever. Uh, and So I, I can't. I never could figure it out. Never could figure it out. Never could figure out why anybody would elect him president. You know. Well, yeah, zero political experience is pretty amazing. Zero political experience. You know, all he did is he ran his entire campaign like it was a, uh, a TV show. Really? Yeah, he was like those comics that went from open mic to, <laughs> to headliner. He went from open mic to president. Exactly. Because he was trying. Here's what I love is people who were basing their opinion of, gee, he's, gonna, he's really good with the economy. Why? Well, didn't you see that show, uh, The Apprentice? You know, he knows money. Folks, that's a TV show. It's all made up. <laughs> you know? Including how important he was. Well, you can't underestimate the power of celebrity because we've had, look, uh, Schwarzenegger was governor here. Uh, well, yeah, Schwarzenegger's governor. He had that other wrestler, what's his name, up in, uh, up in Minnesota. In fact, Jesse both Ventura. Of, Jesse Ventura, a good trivia question is, name a movie where two future governors were the stars in it. Yeah, that was that is a great trivia question. I think it was there in Predator. Yep, yep, Predator. It was Jesse Ventura. And, and, uh, and also, wait a minute, hold on a second. A picture before it, the one where, they, where, he, where they, there was this uh, game where these people had to do something, and the, they were criminals, and whoever survived, you know, didn't get executed or whatever. Running Man, the Running Man. Uh, Ventura was in that with him, too. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. But you want to talk about other people in politics, uh, how about Ronald Reagan? You know, went from show business to politics. And... Uh, Although, hmm? Yeah, he did. I guess that was his... Well, he was a governor before he became president. Yeah, right. He was governor before he became president, but he came, became a governor of California. And uh, at the same time, earlier, uh, George Murphy was a senator from California, and he was in movies as a song and dance man. So there I you go. Who, I, I don't know who he was. George Murphy? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you'd have to go back and look up his movies, you know. Okay. But he was, you know, he was a song and dance man, and then he decided to run for Senate, and he won it and uh, became senator from California. I think it was uh, Tom Lehrer or somebody who wrote a song by about, finally we have a uh, song and dance man who can really sing and dance as, as a senator or something like that. I can't remember what the song was, but, you know. I mean, so you have a. I I don't like people using show business as their springboard to politics. I think it's so wrong, and people should never be allowed to really do it. Or there should be a period of time between when they were 
doing what they're, you know, being in politics and uh, being in, in show business. Um, Trump came directly from TV, but, uh, you know, Reagan waited a while before he ran for governor of California. So, you know, that was okay. But then he became president and he sucked. Okay, so. <laughs> hey, I noticed we've just run out of time. And very rarely do we talk politics, but we managed to yeah, get it we, in this it's week. It's too hot we? for us. <laughs> yeah, right. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, and this is episode, let's see here, I think we're missing one, 241. This is episode 244. Ah, we're getting close to our anniversary. Quarter million. <laughs> quarter. <laughs> quarter million. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause to Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Alex. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me just turn up my volume here. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, welcome to another fine program as we attempt to uh, um, talk to you and talk about things that are important and not important and whatever. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Um, I'm trying to get my my audio just right. I I have a tr I have trouble using the earphones anymore. I, I particularly like using the um, the speakers to hear this stuff with, which most of you do. But here, you know, I'm so used to earphones in my life. My whole life has been a set of wearing a set of earphones. Anyway, let me uh, let these people in. We have a, a short handful of people. We have Jeffrey Stein, and we have uh, Josh Wheeler, and we have, oh, hello there, Vernon Nunn. You're here early. I noticed you were waiting, actually. Um, somebody by the name of Candace Braun is here. Oops, wait a minute. Let me, before I go to my, go to the Zoom picture, let me put on Candace Bra Braun and see who that is here. Uh, let's see if we have it. Uh, right. Turn your right. audio down right. there. Oh, there's I'm... Candace Braun, whoever that is. Hello, Candace. How are you? Um, uh, well, I'm not there, uh, uh, wait a minute. Everybody's got their. Everybody's got their. Uh, right. Right. Uh, everybody's got their. Um, uh, browser's open. Uh, your browser. Your browser is open, Richard. <laughs> Richard, your browser is open. Your browser shouldn't be open. or Well, the browser should be open, but the audio from the browser shouldn't be open. There we go. There, you okay now? Uh, all yeah. right, good. Okay. Trying and, to find and, the link. and Jeff kind of quit beforehand. Yeah. Hello, uh, Richard. I, I, have we had, have you called the show before? About uh, eight years ago, I think. About eight Paris. years ago. So pardon me if I don't remember you. I I was uh, I was working from Paris. I worked for a French bank for seven years, and the first half was in Paris. And I called in, and uh, there was all Macron frenzy over there at the time. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. I mean it was popular then. Yeah, they marched on without him. <laughs> and the left and the right, he's like centrist. Mm -hmm. So the 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 liberal, you know, the the, the left wing side said, "Nah, he's too business," and the. And but he he's against the right wing side, which says like no more immigration, and um, so they kind of split the difference in their recent um, parliamentary, and uh, neither side had enough to make uh, uh, a government. So they tried to pull a centrist in and see what see what will happen. Gee, are we the only country with political really problems? Uh... <laughs> yellow the yellow vests. Yeah. Yeah, so you were working what with a bank over there? I yeah. was, I was working from Paris. I worked for a French bank for seven years in the. Oh, you just, you just turned your. Oh no, now it's Jeff's got his audio up. Oh, okay, that's not. Me. Oh really? That's not you, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta I'm, stop I'm, this, I'm, Jeff. 
Yeah, you, the left and the right. He's like centrist. You, you got, Jeff. <laughs> I can't. That's all I need is Jeff, all my you voice have to do, All you have to do is to get rid of the audio on your on your browser. Oh, there he goes. We lost him again. Oh, You're boy. so cruel to him. Huh? You're so mean to him. No, I'm not mean to him. But, you know, I can't also can't spend. It's annoying. I get it. I can't spend ten minutes of this program trying to figure out what the you know what the problem is there you know anyway um, so anyway so you're back here now permanently back and I retired about a year you retired about a year oh okay I moved down what, to Virginia I was a New York City boy all along yeah what 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 uh, what uh, uh, what bank was you, can I ask you what bank you work for I don't know if you know it BNP Paribas yeah like a chase for Societe Generale, BNP. Oh, I know Societe Generale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Well, anyway, welcome back home. Thanks. Where in New York City do you live? No, I used to live uh, Staten Island, raised in Manhattan. Yeah. But I moved down to Virginia. Oh really? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. And that's down country. near. That's down near Vernon, which who lives in uh, Kentucky. Okay. A little further east. Here comes Jeff. How many want to bet here he hasn't got it licked yet? It depends on if Pam's helped him out or not. Yeah. Right. Wait a minute. Let me see here. We just brought him in here. And uh, are you okay now, Jeff? Connect your audio, Jeff. This is where it's tricky. This is where it's tricky. This is where we get to know whether it's going to be okay or not. Uh, and uh, Je Jeff is trying to figure it out. You know what? Really, we should get Pam to make him out a list of things to turn on and off. Are you there, Jeff? Can you hear us, Jeff? Can you hear us, Jeff? Oh, no, he can't hear us. Oh, boy. Oh, well. On with the show. Yeah, yeah. Should we spend the next half hour trying to solve this problem? No. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, hello, uh, Alan. Welcome to our fine program. Josh, good evening to you. Hello. This has been quite a week, you know, that we've had here, and you haven't been on. Hey, you and I did a little thing, though, on, uh, on Tuesday night after the debate. You yes. did very nicely, you two guys. Got a lot of views, I saw. Yeah, got a yeah, lot of views. Great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and it was, uh, I think, you know, we, I felt we had to do it. You know, I was communicating back and forth with Josh by uh, by uh, text, and then I said to him, "You want to go on after this?" And so we went and did it on uh, on uh, uh, Facebook. So uh, we it was you, I, and Kevin, right? Uh, yeah, and then uh, Brian uh, Neary called in for a few minutes, I think. I think he stayed to the end. Yeah, yeah, he was on for most of I it. I think he had some trouble at first with his internet or whatever, but then he stayed on till till the end, if I remember right. It was a couple of days ago, so yeah. I'm trying to remember. But yeah. yeah. Okay, well, here, here comes Pam to save the day. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Um, now, is uh, it? Hey, hey, uh, Pam, is she doing it? Turn me on. She's right. okay. Jeffrey Stein is connecting to audio. Okay, there we are. Can you, Pam? Pam? Yeah. Pam, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, you, I you can. You know what you should do is make a little list for Jeff so that he knows what he has to do and not do. You know? Then you won't have to be dragged into this every time, and he can probably then solve it that way by just having a little, you know, a little. <laughs> Good idea. I will yeah. give that thought. We like seeing you Pam. Seeing you don't have that. We like seeing you, Pam. We'd rather not uh, have you, you know. I think, yeah, I think Alex is like, yeah, don't come on the show. Just get him on there. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm glad you're feeling better after, your, yeah. after the tumble. Yeah, after falling good. on my face. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that well, wonderful? Whoever's in charge of your makeup is doing a great job. Yeah, well, no, I don't have the makeup on tonight. I don't have it on tonight. The only thing really left that you can see is this. And also, I kind of am missing some hair right in here. Uh, but that's that doesn't show up that much. So. No. so, You know, when I listen to you on WPLJ late at night mm -hmm. as a child, as a, as a teen. As a teen. Um, I... I, 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 I 
pictured you with the long hair. You were a long-haired hippie. So. Yeah, I had down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was on uh, WPLJ. I was WMCA. We were on twelve to, I had to, we down to, here on to WMCA. five. What? We were on twelve. No, I, I was on from uh, two in the morning till six in the morning. Yeah, those yeah. were the days when you could do a show from two in the morning till six in the morning, and have like twenty thousand listeners. <laughs> you know. In New York City. In San Francisco, that would be a morning show. The audience for a morning show. But in New York, there was a hell of an audience out there waiting for, for a show that time of the morning. So, you know, we had a rather large listening audience. And in those days, radio stations did do live programs overnight just for that reason. So, Who was that crazy guy who always had, like, UFO people and... and uh... Maybe it wasn't on the same channel. Conspiracy people. Yeah, I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, he ran out of um, out of a, a small town in uh, in Nevada, mm. uh, and his name was. Mm. Oh God! It'll come to you. <laughs> yeah, it'll come to me. Um, uh, he got a lot of. He had a ton of people because they all listened overnight, and you know, overnight did nothing better than hearing a bunch of nutcases talk about flying <laughs> saucers. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was syndicated nationally. Yeah. Remember, right? The <laughs> only thing that bothered me about it, though, was that uh, the um, um, he never questioned the validity of the people who were making these claims. <laughs> it was the National Enquirer on radio. Yeah, but, I mean, he just, he didn't care. If you said that you had been abducted by a flying saucer he and that you had been anal probed... <laughs> that was the end of the... There was no questioning, no follow-up questioning on this. He'd just go, oh, really? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Sounds like Wolfman Jack. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wolfman Jack was another guy who did very well overnight by having a show yeah. out, of, mm -hmm. out, of, uh, out of Mexico. Uh, That's right. He was out of the country, yeah. Yeah. So, I listened to him all the time when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, you know, I, but I mean, I just uh, uh, I, I was kind of amazed, you know, that uh, uh, that uh, that overnight radio in this country did pretty well. You know, I'm trying to remember what that guy's mm -hmm. name was. He was running out of. Oh uh, no, I think the program was Coast to Coast Radio or something like that. No, no that was that was the guy that followed him after he quit. Okay, maybe that's the guy I was aware of. The guy that does it now, I mean, they still do it, I think. Uh, George like Norrie George or something Norrie. that does it now, yeah. American yeah. Coast. I don't know who did it before that. Crazy. Yeah. Come up here. But I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember what his name was. Jeez, I should remember it. Maybe somebody can write me and tell me or, or knows and puts it up on the... Uh, well, I'm um, sure somebody will. Huh? I'm yeah. sure somebody will. Let's see here. Where are we? Uh, let me see here. Let me... Somebody's saying Art Bell? Art Bell, yeah. Art Bell. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, no, wait a minute. The, the Art Bell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Art Bell. And he was, I try to remember the town he was out of in uh, Pahrump, Nevada, I think. That's where he did the show out of. Yes, there is a city named Pahrump in Nevada. Yeah, my wife and I went out there. She She loves that stupid shit. No, I'm thinking of Long John. <laughs> what? I think I was thinking of Long John Nebel. No, Long John Nebel was another guy who was overnight out of out of New York, of course. Um, no, it wasn't him. I did. We long, have a lot of us night owls out there. Well, I worked with Long John Nebel when I was at WMCA. Really? Yeah, and that was really strange because this was towards the end of Long John Nebel's life. And he would walk around the studio, walk around the floor of the studio, the area of the studio, kind of like this ghost in the night. <laughs> and then he would walk in and sit down, do the show, and get him walk again like a ghost in the night. You know, he's very strange, very strange. But overnight radio was very big there for a long time. <laughs> you, you almost wanted, I, I loved overnight. It was the best. Because what I found when I was working at WPLJ in New York is that I was on from 2 in the morning till 6 in the morning, and uh, nobody bothered me for five years. 
<laughs> and I, I remember the, the example of why is one time I walk in, we're having our yearly staff meeting, and I walk in and the receptionist says, what can I do for you, sir? And I'm going, <laughs> man, nobody knows I even work here, you know. <laughs> I, I, I consume four, four hours of time on their radio station, and the receptionist doesn't know who I am. In fact, mm -hmm. my picture is on the wall behind her. <laughs> you know, so. And they never bothered me, you know, until one day they just said, you're fired. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I'll see you later. I've gotten away with this for a long time. So. Mm. But anyway... We had a strange thing at the WMCA in New York. Does any anybody here remember New York radio that much? Uh, I think so. Well, we had the WMCA, and what they did is they decided they were going to go to an all-new format: half talk, half music. And at the time, it seemed like a really stupid idea, but if you think about it, it's pretty logical. What they did was from 10 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, they had talk. And then from 10 o'clock at night till 10 o'clock the next morning, they had all talk. And we had a guy named Barry Gray, and he was on, and uh, I was on after him. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it was, a, one, it was a great idea for a format. It's just nobody at the time could get used to the concept. But it is kind of logical, because during the day, people want to listen to music. But at night, you know, what's better than talk all night, right? So, except for this, which obviously isn't, doesn't, doesn't have any meaning for anybody, but anyway. Um, so anyway, this week uh, we had, uh, I, 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 I've talked with Josh about this, but maybe I'd like to get some of his feelings about the debate or the debacle that took place on uh, on Tuesday night. I think pretty much everybody in America agrees that was pretty much a uh, burnout on on Trump's part. Yeah, yeah. Unless you ask him. Unless you yeah, ask him. Yeah, for him. Well, every no. If he, how he puts it is everybody knows I won. Yes. He always states things like everybody knows such and such. No, nobody knows that. In fact. Everybody was saying what a crappy job he did. Marjorie Taylor Greene was even admitting yep. what a terrible job he had done. And his uh, toady boy, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy... Vance? Uh, huh? John... No. Uh, J.D. Vance? No, no, the one everybody thinks is gay. Um, J.D. Vance. No, not J.D. Vance, no. <laughs> Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Lindsey Graham. Yeah. Lindsey Graham. Uh, uh, Lindsey Graham... Um, uh, didn't even like the way it turned out. He had to admit it was a pretty much a, you know, a disaster. Uh, and I think with saying that dogs were being, cats were being eaten in Springfield by uh, Haitians, um, pretty much, I think, lost him the election. I just don't think even a reasonable human being can hear that from somebody and say, this guy should be president of the United States. Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, like I said, I live in that TV market and it's not that far away. So, I mean, he's caused a lot of trouble for them over there. You know, the schools were closed today because of bomb threats at all the schools. And the city government's been basically shut down the last two days because of bomb threats and terror activities and nonstop phone calls where the employees of the city are saying... You know, every time you answer the phone, someone's just screaming, you know, racist stuff about the illegal Haitians, which they're not actually illegal. I mean, there are a lot of Haitians there, is my understanding. They were resettled there as part of an agreement with the government, so they are legal. Um, you know, they were refugees from Haiti. Uh, you know, just so he's made a lot of trouble for the city there the last two days, uh, three days. But, you know, I guess the schools were even closed today, so... You know, I mean, all because of his mouth. I mean, you know, that's the, the problem with that. I mean, well, well, Trump today said that he was, when he was president, on day one, boy, does he have a lot of jobs to do on day one. Yeah, right. On day one, uh, he was going to uh, 
get rid of all the Haitians in Springfield. Well, you know, I mean, the Gestapo. Well, but they're being protected. Day. They're being protected by the United States government. They're under, under they were a invited. They were invited to yeah. travel them. Yeah. The, the woman in question that J.D. Vance brought up, I guess, first, was born and raised. She's American. She was born and raised in Ohio. I mean, he claims it was migrants. Well, wait a minute. Did somebody eat a cat somewhere in, in Ohio? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it, it was a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was a, I, a, shall we say, an Anglo-Saxon woman? Yeah. Yeah. Because we love our cats. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've heard him the last couple of days with his, you know, they did a mashup or whatever uh, the other day I heard, you know, I, he won the, you know, 92 to 8, 88 to 10, mm. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the other thing. To six. <laughs> and, I mean, I mean, it's like, I mean, all day long, you know. I mean, you know, whatever. But what is you know. what's happened is he's lost his friggin' mind. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think he's exactly. He's not intelligent to begin with, and you know, he's certainly not mentally. <clears throat> Uh, calm, how you know? can he, how I mean, can he not be intel when intelligent when K Kamala is so stupid and dumb? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Richard. The, okay. Richard. Wait a minute, I think your mic is off. You. Your you mic is off, Richard. Your microphone is off. Yeah. It's not too late to pull him. They were going to pull him October 7, 2016, when the uh, when that uh, entertainment tape came out. Yeah. Grab him by the... So, uh, and it's only September. <laughs> so maybe a double switch. You know. Oh, oh boy. What are they going to do then? Put J.D. Vance at the oh, head? Oh, that'll of be the only way. Lindsey Graham. You know. <laughs> Remember, who's that woman that suddenly has appeared out of nowhere? Laura Loomer. Yes. Laura Loomer, yeah. Yeah. What is with her? Where did she come from? What's her claim to fame? Oh, she's she's probably giving a Trump BJ. She know. tweets a lot of uh, Nazi stuff. So, well, no, she she that went to that. the 9/11 uh, thing with with Trump, the 9/11 uh, uh, thing with Trump and uh, memorial memorial, and she <laughs> thinks 9/11 is a hoax. Oh boy! Yeah. Wow! I think Richard yeah. froze up on us. Are you there, Richard? Yeah. Still. I'm still here. Oh, okay. You're yeah, frozen. You are frozen. You're frozen. You might turn your camera on and off again. You're not right on. on. Huh? Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is Jeff frozen? Everybody's frozen. Huh? Everybody is frozen. Oh, boy. What the hell is this all about? I've never had this happen. Uh, let me see here. What could I do to make this... Uh, work here oops and it just crashed what do you know my zoom just crashed well everybody will call back here what zoom i think is down folks i think zoom is down uh because we have no let me just make sure i have yeah i have um yeah yep i'm fine with that Zoom has crashed, my friends. Oh, there we go. We're back again now. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, uh, guys, everybody, call me back, will you please? I would love to see you. Uh, just uh, call back. Uh, everybody, it seems, uh, was uh, having a problem there. and uh, we're, we're okay now, I think. No, now it's, fr it's crashed again. Son of a bitch. This is really something. Oh, there we go. It's crashing a couple of times. Uh, let me see here. Let me see what we want to do. View. Okay. Five people entered the room here, and we uh, go admit all. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. I don't know what happened. It's like Zoom crashed. It and, is. Oh, it was everybody. I thought it was just me. No, that's what I thought. I thought it was just me because I could talk to and see myself. But then I realized that Charlie was 
frozen and Josh wasn't moving and I crashed right here. You know, everything crashed, everything froze up. And then Zoom just crashed. And then Zoom came back and then it crashed again. And then it came back up and all you guys were there again. Did any of you have to sign back in? No. I it automatically came back. Yeah, so, me too. Really? Wow. I thought maybe because I don't know where the link is. That's strange. I thought my I, I thought that my internet had frozen because they've been doing. Well, some I began to think area. it was all uh, t Tony's fault. <laughs> Must have been. Yeah, it's yeah, that haircut. Him. Yeah, what <laughs> is what is that haircut? That is a that is an interesting haircut. I have to admit. I got the crew cut. I told him to take everything off. No, it yeah. kind of looks like a Zippy the Pinhead haircut. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I, I was like, oh. I feel it feels nice and cool. You know, I was going to tell you, I went to the supermarket, and you know what's going up in price so much per pound? Cat. Well, well, cat. It's like eighteen dollars a pound. Apparently, in your case, hair. <laughs> hair too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. What? What's going up in price? Uh, the cat cat per pound is like eighteen. <laughs> Okay, oh, per pound. I see. Okay. <laughs> Alex, I heard you in the beginning. Has he lost his mind, really? Or is he, is, I don't even know what to think of this guy anymore, really. Well, he was crazy. Oh, you, no, you know, you know what to think about him, Tony. He's a, he's a, he's a lunatic. And you know, you just wonder what's going on up there, really. Like, what, I would love to know, like, behind the scenes, what they, how they talked to him before the debate. Can you imagine the stories they have about this guy? But you can't, you can't talk to him. If you, if you don't agree with him, you're immediately fired. You're gone. You're gone. He doesn't want to hear anything negative. That's and so it, you, right? so, so what you get, yeah, this is a guy, I don't know how he managed to be the head of companies. Uh, yeah. In fact, maybe there's some question as to whether they ever made any real money. Because anybody who doesn't listen to his staff and to people who have a different opinion than his really isn't a good management of a company, you know, so. Yeah, I don't think he had more than 15 people, and, you know, most of them were either his relatives or psychophants. So. Right, yeah. yeah, the close circle, right. Yeah, I mean, in, in management, you know, uh, doctrine or whatever, you know, they call that groupthink, you know, where the entire group tells you, what they think you want to hear for their own self-preservation or long-term gain. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is that if you're a good manager, you tell people, when I'm bad, tell me when I'm bad. When I'm doing something wrong, sure. tell me when you think I'm doing something wrong. I want everybody's yep. opinion. You know, the, the groupthink situation has been studied pretty hard over the last few decades by political scientists and historians looking at how different presidents ran their day-to-day, uh, -day, their cabinet level uh, and national security level, military level mm -hmm. you know, reports. And, you know, some of the best mm -hmm. obviously didn't employ that mm -hmm. that particular uh, thing. You know, I mean, you know, a, a group think is, is, is gotten some people into trouble a little bit here and there. You know, I mean, there was... Very few people that were afraid to warn about, you know, Vietnam, for example, for what, you know, things like that. I mean, it happens, but, you know, that's that's but with Trump, it, I'm sure it happens a lot more just because oh, Trump doesn't want to hear anything that isn't right. his opinion. Well, and he you know. certainly has an obvious propensity to change people out without any care of the consequences of it. Well, especially of being president, yeah. you know, you don't know everything, you know, and- According uh, to him, he does. Huh? According, According to him, idea, that's, right. what, that's the problem, <clears throat> you know, but I'm sure that somebody like Kamala Harris doesn't feel she knows everything. I'm sure she's willing to put together a cabinet and listen to what that cabinet has to say. But in Trump's cabinet, if you disagreed with him, you were out the door. You're out. Richard, did you ever hand up? Yeah, I was going to say, so one of the essential um, uh, things for a, a president to be able to uh, uh, work with staff, you got to work through people and you got to pick good people. And Trump, for all his saying, I picked the best people and he swapped them out so many times and, and trashes their opinion now. So as, as they uh, saw him, but we don't really get to see that in the debate. Uh, you know, debate is just... You know, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that and parrying against one guy. 
So that's, you know, that's the, that might be something, but it's not the whole thing. But worse than not listening to a, a diverse cabinet or a diverse opinions is he's going to change the civil service and take about 4,000 people off the top and put it, you know, people that, that go with Project 2025 in there. And, and that's going to mess up the government. Well, I don't it's think I, I, I'm going to be really surprised if we wake up on what's the, what's the election day? Fifth, November 6th. November, 5th. November 5th. If I wake up on November 6th and he is president, I don't think that's going to be the case. President elect. I think it'll be decided in one night. I think there's too many states that, you know, yeah. they don't have their their uh, mail in ballots and all that kind of stuff until the weekend after that. Yeah, but we'll have some idea as to who won. You know, maybe not. Maybe some of the swing states may not have all their votes yeah. counted. Oh, God, do we have to go I through this again? Well, uh, when we, when we four or five last time. Huh? That took four or five days last time, if I remember right. So, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you just never know. It took I mean, that but, long to steal the yeah. election? Yeah, right. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think so. There, there could be some. You know, I mean, it could be decided that night. We don't know. Or there could be some really great indications if it's not. You know, I mean, if you know, if Harris wins North Carolina, for example, you know, that evening and, and th I mean, you know, there could be great, you know, great signs there. But you just, you just don't know. I mean, I, you know, speaking of North Carolina, did you hear the monkey wrench that got thrown in there? No. The state so. Supreme Court has ruled that uh, RFK Jr. had a valid uh a concern to get his name off the ballot and so they postponed early voting in north carolina because of that even though the state lost as they have to mail the ballots out by september the 6th oh that's not good yeah. hmm. Hmm. this rfk okay. i don't, he had to I don't come know in. how much yeah. his name is going to have an effect <laughs> Well, no, Bree, turn turn off your mute your microphone till you want to talk because there's too much there's too much noise going on there. It's, yeah, the whole point sure. the whole point of the whole point of this exercise is the Supreme Court in North Carolina are elected judges, and it, it was four to three, and it's it's their way of suppressing voters that they don't think are going to vote Republican. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if, if can you can you wait? I don't know how that works. Or how are you figuring that works? I mean, if if people do vote for uh, Kamala Harris, more vote for her than vote for <laughs> Donald Trump. How is that going to hurt that well, vote? Well, Democrats Democrats typically uh, vote more. Democrats vote with early voting and mail-in voting than do Republicans. Okay. But don't you so think, they're messing up. They're messing up that voting. Don't you think that there's enough uh, uh, mojo behind this whole thing and uh, enough uh, stuff going that, uh, that one can hope? You one know, can that, hope, that I mean, it's people still, are going to get it, out. It, and, what? Yeah. yeah. I don't think Democrats how, how are going to have stay. a fair election when you got these people putting their thumb on the scale. Well, but if you don't have um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, mail-in voting, let's just say it's screwed up in South Carolina, then the Democrats are going to get out in full force and vote during this election. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is just the mojo going on this deal, you know. Um, she's, got a, she's got a head of steam going here that I don't think it's going to slow down that badly. Um, you, where did you say I'm you getting more and more confident. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more and more confident that that'll happen, too. Yeah, yeah. On Fox News today, they said they're dead. They're dead even on their poll. So even Fox News is starting to go the, on on their what do you call it uh, survey or whatever. That, that, that. Well, who cares what Fox reports? The fact is that the, the the votes that we the polls we care about have are about five uh, vote five percent ahead. Yeah, the uh -huh. Ipsos Reuters poll that came out last night uh, had the lead ex extend by, well, I think, two points after the debates mm -hmm. uh, and has it up to just over five points uh, mm -hmm. nationally and among registered voters now up over, I believe, like three points. So uh, all categories across the board 
saw an uptick as, as far as well, everything. Can I, I ask you a far. question, though? When these pollsters go out there mm -hmm. and they check these people out to see who they're going to vote for, mm -hmm. don't they, shouldn't they say, are you a registered voter? Because if they're not, well, it they doesn't do. really and matter. You know, that's, them correct. That's, that's why they break the polls down for you, because they do ask people if they are registered, and the people that say no, you know, they can go get registered if they want. So they're still taking the data, you know, and they're they're still asking, okay, you're not registered, but who do you prefer for, you know, president of these two candidates or these three candidates or whatever? Yeah. And and, uh, you know, her lead has been growing in that area, and his has been dropping, and some of the people that were in the other category have slowly shifted toward her and, and a lot of the post debate data that the networks gathered uh saw a pretty sizable amount of independent or undecided traffic mm. claim that they made a decision after that night and moved in her direction yeah so i mean so i mean regardless of um, my point is the trend overall is that all of those things are moving that direction and all of those things are positive. So even if you say, oh, well, that one's a, a too much outlier or that one, well, you can't say that about all. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the point is everything is moving that direction and it's positive. Yeah. I mean, I agree. 2016, whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, it's fine. People still have to go vote. I mean, that's, you know, we know that mm -hmm. now. We knew that before, but we apparently had to be... Uh, very painfully taught that in, in a, in a real way, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, you know, it, it's still going to be close and it's still going to be turn out and all that. But as we've said before, if they are able to drive turnout, um, it's possible that they can have a very, very, very good night. You know, I mean, I have no idea if it will lead to anything or not, but you know, the, all the, information that you see in the media says that you know in, in the 24 hours after you know she was endorsed by a famous celebrity that 400,000 people visited a government website to find out where they could register to vote you know yeah. and i doubt that very many of those people were doing that so they could go vote for trump richard did you yeah. have your finger up there no i'm pointing out that i agree with that point yeah that you know, I mean, whether you like the endorsement or don't or the, like the person, none of that really matters. Those are just numbers, facts, you yeah. know, data. So if if even half of those people who register now go and vote, that's good news. What if 10,000 of those people live in Pennsylvania or Georgia? You know, mm -hmm. that is a massive, I mean, this, those states were won by margins less than that last night, Right. Right. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, so, you know, I mean, you just, we don't know until it happens, but, you know, if this were a business, we would be, we would be happy, right? Because all of our data and finance, financial information and productivity information and quality inf is all positive right now. So that doesn't mean we stop working on it, you know, Right. but that also means we walk around the building a little bit lighter. I think we'd like to see a nice 10% difference. You know, that would give us enough that I think we could win this without any question. I want something. Well, so I like what I like what Josh said, though, about the trend, because there was one county that they were talking about this afternoon and Trump won it by 19% in 2016. But in 2020, he only won it by 14% and he lost. Okay. All right. And that's what we talked about the last show that I was on, or maybe the night after the debate or whatever, mm -hmm. where I said that, you know, Patrick has been hammering away at this when we talked to him about how, you know, some of the places that the Clinton campaign went and everything, they really screwed up because they thought, oh, you know, we want to win in Western PA. We'll just go to Pittsburgh or we want to win in Wisconsin. We'll just go to Milwaukee, you know, and he said, no, they need to go 70 miles outside of Milwaukee and mm -hmm. to Waukegans and outside of that in places. And they have a plan to do that. And they're doing their best tours because they've realized that in the what's going to make a huge difference is in the areas that she was going to lose that county anyway, 77 to 23. 
Mm -hmm. She could just change that to 7426, you know, and these areas around these states, that's going to equal an aggregate amount of numbers to help her win the state. Yeah. So that's why it's important to go campaign in areas that she's going to lose that area. And, you know, seven out of 10 people in that area don't like her or whatever. She just needs to get it to six and a half out of 10 people not to like her in that area. You know, I mean, and in the whole state, you know, and then she's still in the local TV markets for the Milwaukee or the Pittsburgh or whatever. So the voters in that area are still going to get their exposure the same as they would if she were in an arena downtown in Milwaukee. You know, so, uh, you know, I mean, that's that's at least well, they I'll, they seem I'll, to have learned lessons, I'll, which is all I'll, you can ask. I'll tell you why I'm going to vote for Trump. Can I explain why I'm going to vote for Trump? Sure. OK, let me explain this. Uh, the trouble is in New York City and in New York State, we never see any of the candidates come to visit us to curry our favor. Yeah. And yet, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think Donald Trump has a court date here in New York City, so he will be visiting us. And so I'm all for that, okay? And I'm, sure. I think I'm for him, all right? I think, he, I think he's just coming there to be sentenced. Oh, I, that's what I said. Yeah, it's <laughs> one of his court dates. He came to the 9-11 uh, thing, and he... Uh, yeah, shook, with Laura Loomer. He shook yeah. hands very nicely with... Uh, with uh, um, um, Kamala. Kamala. Yeah. So, you know, that's that was nice. He probably did because he was, everybody was giving him a bad time because he looked so reluctant to do it at the debate, you know. Um, it was kind of like, um, somebody I think described it as looking like a father who just met his uh, daughter's uh, black boyfriend's parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now uh, we have a little, we take a little time out every show that's like this uh, to guess what Bree is eating for lunch. <laughs> cat or dog? <laughs> yeah, if you had cat or dog there, we wouldn't be surprised, you know? We really wouldn't. What's in those dumplings? Let me see here. They have somebody by the name of Terry Davis. Wants to come on here. Let me let me just uh, admit him, and see if he is actually a real human being or not. But I got to put my face up here, so in case there's something dirty that's going to happen here, uh, we can. Uh, okay, there's Terry Davis. Let me see if we recognize Terry Davis. Oh, hello, Terry. How are you? Well, this is a guy we have. Uh, uh, are, are you there, Terry? Wait a minute. Ask to unmute. Okay. Mic's off. Let me see here. Terry Davis, ask to unmute. Oh, here we have another person learning how to. Man. Oh, 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 oh. This is oh. Julia Connor <laughs> on Thanksgiving Day instead of sucking on the turkey. Yeah, okay. He's sucking on this All big righty. Black cock. Let me see here. Let me get rid okay. of that. Let me get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to get rid of him. And uh, let me see here. Don't worry, it's not going out. So um, it went out, huh? No, it's not going out. It's not going out. No, my face is out. Let me see here. Give me. Get rid of him. How do I get rid of him? Remove. remove. There we go. I'll tell you later. He seemed like such a nice guy too. Yeah, he, he seemed like. You know what it could have been. It could have been. Let me let me go back to you guys here. It could have been uh, a uh, that the, the guy we saw there was a video of some guy. Okay, and then he puts on Just all to get these on. horrible. There, I'm glad you got a nice show, everybody. It was. I didn't uh, ruin Bree's appetite. I, I think that was happening in the uh, in the living area at, at Mar a Lago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me let's get back to uh, Bree here. Uh, because we're in the middle of playing. Guess what Bree is eating? Bree, mm -hmm. hold hold up whatever you're eating. Oh, that's a soup. You're are you drinking yeah. a soup from a cup? Uh, okay. What? Let's I'm almost what, done. It's got a hmm. box oh, lunch. You're almost done. Oh, okay. You got one of those bento boxes or something? No, it's just a sushi set lunch. 
Is a sushi and I get here and I have five dollars. And and the soup is a what is the soup? Uh, it's miso soup. Miso soup. Okay. Yeah. And there he is. He's the in. Oh, by I the am. way, did I mention to you, uh, uh, in the case of Richard, who don't know Brie, uh, he's in Indonesia right now. Malaysia. Malaysia. Uh, or, or, Malaysia, yeah. excuse me. I, I didn't go to, uh, Brian's not here, is he? I didn't go, to, I didn't get to go to Vietnam. You know what? Because I, I got to the airport and I got to the boarding gate and they said, where's your visa? And I said, ah, oh, I forgot, I forgot, so I'm American, I need a visa for Vietnam. So I, uh, I went back out to the holding area, and I sat down for a minute, and I said, well, where do I want to go that I haven't been? I went to Cook in a bottle in Sabah, Borneo, and it, it was amazing. It was a you went to excellent, Borneo? Excellent. You went to Borneo? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was excellent. And then uh, the, the airline said, no, you were, it was your fault. You didn't get the visa, so we're not refunding, we're not getting... I wrote to them and I gave them some suggestions on how they could make some adjustments to their system. They said, you know what, we're going to give you a refund. And uh, they gave, so they gave me a refund. Which uh, airline was it? Which, so, which airline was that? Air Asia. Air Asia. Uh -huh. So I, uh, I regrouped and October 5th, I'll go to Vietnam. And I tried to get this EV, so they keep kicking it back to me. They're like, oh, well, your photo's not exact. Oh, you know, you didn't put your middle name. So, but I should be there October 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. So I'll let you know. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, our report from Bree about his little long sure. vacation. Um, yeah, so you didn't didn't ha you didn't have to go to Vietnam? I didn't get to go. I couldn't. Didn't I, get didn't to go. I, I didn't have to go to Vietnam either, but that was only because <laughs> I had already served in the military. <laughs> So. I had an exemption. You had an exemption. Oh, no. Did you really, Ver Vernon? I would have been scared. Yeah. For college, yeah. Yeah, until I had a college exemption. Too. Oh, you had yeah, a college yeah. exemption. Yeah. Until oh. I graduated from engineering school, I was exempt from the draft. And by yeah. then, the yeah. war was over. Exactly. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well, I had In my case, started. they had the lottery, and I got a nice high number, so I didn't have to go. That's good. Well. The war wasn't actually over, but and my number would when the college exemption expired, my number would have sent me there. But they gave us the option. Um, I think something that that the timing was just right that gave you the option. Once you were called to report to the recruiting station, you could go down and join the National Guard, mm -hmm. and that would that would be okay. Uh, but so how I did the National yeah. Guard for six years. How, exactly. how many here got out of the military because of bone spurs? Anybody? <laughs> uh, that's no. I never. I don't how think how about you? Well, Tony, you weren't. You were too young for Vietnam. No. I mean, I had to sign up for the draft area. I, they made us do something with the draft. I forgot what it was. My mother, I think when I was eighteen, you had to fill something out or something. Yeah, you have to register. Yeah, that was. Yeah. The draft back. My mother was all worried. Are they going to do? Nah, there's no war. <laughs> I didn't have war. to do either. The, the 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 draft was over with by the time I was eighteen. And I was too old by the time they came up with this registration thing. Oh, okay. All right. Missed do, them both. And they, yep. people don't yeah. have to register anymore, do they? In any way, shape, or form? Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, really? They so. Go down to, and get their you know, card from the... Yep. But, it, but it. it's not a draft card because there's no draft. Right. Yeah. But they still it's have to be in the system. Yeah, it's just selective. They don't have to register. <laughs> Well, why, but why do they have to be in the system? That doesn't make much sense. Because, because they might, might bring it back to draft. Right. Oh. Okay. What was the age limit? Do you remember the age limit where you couldn't be drafted? Was there a certain age? Uh, 35, I think. Was yeah, it I, think it was, that old? I think it was 35, yeah, if I remember correctly. Ooh. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe it was 30. No, it was 35. I think. No, or it was, <laughs> Can't be president. I was going to stay in college until I was thirty-five, so they had a lottery. That's a lot of college. <laughs> Look at, you change your major. That I went. <laughs> and we won't ask. We won't ask. Oh, uh, uh, well, of course we could ask uh, Jeff. Did you? I. Yeah. I worked on. I worked on military design products called atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. Called wow. atomic. You worked on atomic bombs. Yes, I did. Are you an engineer, Jeff? Then 
Yeah. yeah let's hope he knows something. Yeah, he's. Wow, that's good. From atomic bombs to heart valves, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty that great. It was the most valuable change. Yeah, but did they? So they, they, if you were building atomic bombs, you didn't have to, had, didn't have to go. Didn't have to do anything. You just, I don't know. Somehow, they knew what I was working on, and your past. That's how my dad got out of World War II. Really? How? Mm -hmm. He he worked on the Manhattan Project at the University of Chicago. Oh my God! Oh. How yeah. that's that's. Did you ever ask him about all of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he told me he couldn't tell me. It was all top secret. He could never tell him much. I uh, didn't have a good dad. My dad was at the University of Chicago, got his PhD in engineering, and he worked on the Manhattan Project. There you go, everybody. Did he tell you everything? <laughs> no, 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 I can't remember if you light the fuse first. No. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, the reason why North Korea doesn't have the bomb yet they can't find somebody to run fast enough after lighting the fuse. Who put a medic in? We'll volunteer, Tony. Yeah, we'll volunteer. Just hold it. Nothing's going to happen. Am I supposed to be here still? So, Richard, we didn't ask you. You probably saw the debate, right? What was your takeaway from the debate? Um, a typical... Uh, Typical poor performance by um, by Trump. So yeah, with, and 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 perfect okay, well, by. Um, it was amazing, by, wasn't it? How perfect she was. Yeah, she was impressive. I was really. Yeah, yeah. One would have to be yeah. very impressive by her performance. Yeah. You she, can see she was a DK. She was prepared. Yeah. Skin, and wow. She had a goal to get under his skin, yeah. and she did it several times. Yeah. Yeah. And I like she shook his hand that she went over to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, that she got under his skin. Went over to to well, like he, she 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 had a. He doesn't like to shake hands. She had a game plan to get under his skin, but it wasn't an obvious game plan. It was a well constructed game. Yeah, plan. yeah. I mean, you're he supposed to go. And he did. You're supposed to go on stage, go to now. the middle, and shake hands, and he went right to the podium. So she went to his podium. Well, he yep. had no intention of shaking hands with her. No, I thought sure that was an answer. I don't think he would have, right? It didn't look like it. No, no he doesn't like to shake hands. And they said he wasn't He's looking at her like either. Right? 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 What were you saying, Bree? Bree? What were you saying? He doesn't like to shake hands. He's a but, germaphobe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 You, you can't you, you look at it from the standpoint of policy and, and knowledge and information. Most people don't. He probably, when they shook hands, he probably slipped her a note that says, "You want a good time? Call this number." Well, what did you have a different opinion about who won if that you, thing? If you, I think it's a toss-up. I, and, and, I mean, it depends on how you're asking. I don't. I don't think you're going to find. I don't think you're going to find very many people who thought it was a toss-up, mm. even if they know about. Well, it. the Pop problem is, is you you never will know because after it's done, all the pundits come on and they, they do their agenda setting, so they tell you what to think about how it happened. You can't you can't just watch it and have well, your. I own think opinion. when you were that never is the case. Uh, as as I was watching it, I saw a disaster in the making. The minute he came up with that. Whole thing about eating cats and dogs. Yeah, I, I, mean, felt, I, had I felt to, he, I had to make my brother rewind that. And I, yeah. no, I I felt that he had blown the election with that. And that's that's how we got that's how we got more because you you you're still thinking intellectual knowledge. Okay, if if you are right, then Kamala should be ahead by a landslide. It should not. It shouldn't be anywhere no, close. No, I I don't think not. she should be it's ahead close. by a landslide because we got a nation full of dummies here. Yeah. And there's why it was a toss up because yeah. yeah. It, it it just it just was. Yeah, well he speaks at a level that you know a third grader or fourth grader can understand. And and people see that as strength. With, with Kamala, company, it's they the can't... same thing. Kamala shocks at No, Kamala Kamala, Kamala the only thing Kamala is selling is joy. 
really. That's her commodity. And she wants to turn the page. And she wants to turn the page, but joy is her commodity. She is, it, people suddenly are seeing a campaign that is having fun running for office. And yeah. people want to be part of a party where people are having fun. They don't want to be left out. And I think that's a, well, that's a better commodity than what Trump has, which is nothing but constant negativism. You know, you would almost well, think he hates this country. Unless he's you know, when, when people go to a restaurant, uh, there it's like 90% it's more likely that they will review it if they had a bad experience. So, but like most of the time, they will not review it if they just had a regular experience. Yeah. People tend to focus on negative. Like, do we, you know, they say, oh, negative campaigning doesn't work, but. Josh, what do you think about Josh? What do you think about what I was saying about the fact that she's running a joyful campaign, and people like to be part of that kind of party? I'm not talking about political party. Huh? I think that's what she's doing. I mean, her number one message so far has been, you know, the idea of not returning to the nonsense that we put up with for the four years that he was in office and the consistent uh you know drama or chaos whatever word you want to use that went on with it the entire time that he was there you know so um as far as the public you know i don't converse with people about this outside of here much but i've heard people talking and even the people that love him think that he did you know terrible uh so but they're not going to change their mind about him if for no other reason, because people don't like to admit that they're wrong. And in this particular environment, you know, the nation is just so hardcore with certain groups. People aren't willing to give that up because a lot of the comments that I heard, you know, about people talking about it was, you know, you know, oh, I don't care how bad he did. He could have, he could have passed out and pooped his own pants and been in a diaper. And I still wouldn't vote for her. You know, so, I mean, that's one, you know, so his group isn't really going to move. But among open-minded people, I, I don't know that I've seen any open-minded people mm. who have given any inclination that they thought that he did a good job. Yeah, but also I think there's a whole bunch of people who are in the middle waiting to see who mm -hmm. is the most acceptable candidate of the two. Yeah, and I... I personally do not think that his message in his closing statement that we are a failing nation, we are a nation in decline, and we are destined for World War III, I don't really think that's the message that most people want to hear or want to embrace. Or, or even claiming that she's a communist. I mean, isn't that so 50s? Yeah. Yeah, you know? it sounds like when you're talking about the red skin, remember? Yeah, but I mean, it's so, so 50s, you know. Yeah, it, it's an eye roller. Right. Yeah, exactly. Hey, listen, this has been fun tonight. Uh, we not only had somebody who crashed the show, that's interesting. Uh, we also had the show crash because Zoom somehow died on us. And I bet it died everywhere around the country and people were going crazy. I hope Grandma calls back. Anyway... <laughs> I thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Richard for joining us. Call again, Richard, will you please? You know, we enjoy having new faces here that we can count on. And now that I know your name, I won't worry that you're somebody trying to show us pictures of people doing horrible things with their bodies. Uh, Alan, thank you for being here, someone who constantly does horrible things with his body. Uh, Charlie Wallace, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Josh Wheeler, so nice to have you here. Vernon Nunn, always a pleasure. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, Tony, thank you. And thanks to Jeff Stein, and thanks to Bree, who was showing us wonderful pictures of, uh, uh, that, uh, of Malaysia. Okay, anyway. Well, am I Good right? Well, and Jeffrey. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, Jeffrey. I forgot Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. Well, Thank, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, we yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, give a big Good wave night. goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And uh, let me uh, 
There we go. Now we're fine and we're off the air almost. And stay tuned for Amy Manuel. She's next over most of these same gab nets. Uh, we'll see you again on Monday for the pop-up show on uh, uh, Facebook and then uh, at 4 o'clock and then see you again uh, right here at 1030 Eastern Time, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, of course, you know, do what I always do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.